Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Gen Z Pro. I am your host today, Carrie, and I am really honored to introduce you all to today's guest, Sebastian Borgé. Uh, he is the COO of Sandbox. He is an entrepreneur, he's a game developer, and he's a Web3 pioneer. Thank you so much for coming to the channel. Well, thanks. Really happy to have like, this uh, impromptu interview together. So I'm, I'm keen to share and like, uh, like, well, introduce new people to what we are doing. That's so awesome. So I know I just listed a bunch of credentials, but could you introduce yourself, what you do? Absolutely. So uh, I'm the co-founder and CEO at The Sandbox. The Sandbox is essentially a decentralized virtual world where people, anyone, can become a creator, like make 3D content or like full games and experiences without any programming knowledge, just drag and drop. And all those content, all those creations, they can own them thanks to the use of uh, technology, blockchain and NFT. And through that, they would be able to monetize it exchange it with other users and even sell it on the marketplace to earn a revenue. Uh, we've grown as one of the largest platform uh, in the space of open metaverse and decentralized virtual world with over 5 million users. And we brought in a lot of major brands from all around the world. We have 400 partners, uh, music artists like Snoop Dogg, Steve Aoki, Paris Hilton, or Warner Music, gaming companies, etc. And uh, we're really excited to uh, like pushing this vision of like growing uh, the creator economy where people can make their job actually to participate in building the metaverse. Wow, sounds so cool. So uh, we are currently here at Riyadh in Saudi Arabia and you, are, uh, you spoke at the Leap Conference 2024. Mm -hmm. So I just have a question. So why Leap? Why do you, what was pulling you back towards the conference in Saudi in general? So, when I think about Sandbox, and we started Sandbox back in 2011 as a mobile game. Back then, it was just a 2D game where people can make pixelated world and share them, but couldn't monetize it. It's been five years we built that platform now using uh, a 3D uh, multiplayer a creation tool that are accessible, a marketplace, a map. And there's three core DNA aspects in Sandbox. The first one is really focusing on user-generated content and being creator-driven. So empowering just not uh, professionals, but anyone to like enter the video game industry, to make their own content and creation, bring life towards their imagination. The second is like our uh, multicultural, uh, inclusive and diverse background. Sandbox is not just a company that's big in Europe or US actually, we're big globally, and that's surprising for, in a way for a startup to know that 30% of our audience is in Asia. And we are big in Korea, Japan, Hong Kong, uh, Thailand, Singapore, in Turkey. And as well here in the region, in the MENA region, we started to uh, grow. So being on the ground in different countries, uh, educating people about what is a metaverse, what are like the possibilities to earn a revenue, to turn into a job to participate into the creator economy by making those digital assets online is important. Specifically here in Saudi Arabia, more than half of the population is less than 30 years old. So that Gen Z, they already live in games. They live in virtual worlds. They spend 12 hours a week in it. They participate to bring value to all those platforms. But in a way, they don't take that value for themselves and they doesn't contribute to grow a local industry of game companies and creators yet. And we hope that we can bring something uh, by partnering with uh, the DGA who owns the land, by uh, a partnership we did with Al Faisal University and speaking at events like LEAP to broaden the opportunities for, for the local talent. And the third thing that I think like Sandbox is really good at is like uh, creating this virtual land, those neighborhoods on a, a map, a finite map of 166, 164 lands, where we we allow people to become virtual neighbors and participate into kind of like a social project where we are building together this open world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds so interesting. And I believe it's a very unique aspect of Sandbox, right? Mm -hmm. The fact that you have all these different places where you can like land that you can buy. Yes. And it's um, a way, way to, for people to make money and just create content, not just playing the game. So let's talk a bit about your work in gaming. How did you get started in gaming and you know what motivates <laughs> you to create new games every day? Well, I think as a teenager, I already was, uh, I got my first uh, game console as a Super Nintendo, Super Mario World was my first game. And from there, I had all those uh, generation of console. I played a lot of game as a teenager and uh, I said, oh, one day I want to make my own game. And then I realized along the way, even though I, I did like, engineering studies, etc., that it's pretty hard to make a video game. You need like a, 
uh, specific skill set, uh, talent, access to like development resource, access to hardware, and it costs money to produce video game, and the chance of success behind are very thin. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a high barrier to entry, a very uh, low chance of uh, like success, and a lot of companies that fail in the middle. And I said, oh, how can we fix that? How can we like democratize access to like making your own video games? And back in 2011, uh, I've been a serial entrepreneur. I co-founded three other companies with my business partner, Archer Madrid. And back in 2011, as we exited that second company, I decided, okay, let's jump into mobile game now that smartphones are here and we can make games just with uh, one or two people in a garage, you know, like that dream, that picture we all have of like starting your startup in the garage of Silicon yes. Valley. It was possible again at that time. Mm. We founded that mobile game studio and the first game we did was Sandbox on mobile. People could create by the touch of their finger uh, content, games, art, music, etc. and share it with all the players in an online gallery. And it grew into a large success. We had 40 million downloads, 70 million player made creations. People were really enjoying creating. And uh, over eight years, like we had a lot of updates, more content. And that led us to our uh, like, um, we've been bringing a lot of people to discover uh, new skills, to discover a STEM topic, to educate about like making games, etc. But we were missing the monetization uh, part. People were not able to earn a revenue from it. So over time, even if you're passionate, even if you have like social fame, recognition as a creator, I wasn't enough. Until we found about blockchain and NFTs in 2017, and we we found it was a solution to that monetization problem. And now, like it's been five years, we work on the new version of Sandbox uh, that uh, has been driving new talent, has been driving people to earn some revenue from their activity as a creator. And we hope to keep growing that. Uh, the platform is still in alpha today. We'll probably this year move to beta, and next year an open. Uh, publicly opening, uh, we we're proud to have more than a hundred thousand active creators uh, on a monthly basis. We uh, we have a thousand experiences that are live uh, since we opened publishing uh, just a few months ago. So it's starting to take off, and our role is like by being closer in countries like Saudi Arabia, in Turkey, uh, in Vietnam, in Thailand, um, in uh, in Korea, in Japan, etc. Uh, to those global and diverse uh, talent. We also can have build a platform where you're going to see more diverse content and things that we don't find on other platform, uh, giving new opportunities to everyone. Wow, that sounds great. And I love to hear about your plans for next year of Sandbox. <laughs> um, and next question I have for you is, uh, so Sandbox is really unique, obviously, and it's definitely disrupting the industry. Mm -hmm. Do you think the company started off with any like central philosophies or maybe even along the way you found something that you really want to like make as if it's your central idea for the company? Yeah, I would say uh, like going back to what I was saying, like with the free uh, component, like that part of our DNA, be really creator driven, user generated content. The mission of the company is to empower anyone creativity and allowing like to turn simple ideas into uh, real games. Uh, with the first thing we saw when we launched uh, Sandbox, uh, the, we first introduced a 3D editor called Vox Edit, where people could play with voxel is like uh, 3D cubes. The, yeah. uh, think of it like digital Lego. Anyone can use these Legos. Like yeah, I've you, seen the you, little avatars. Uh, yeah, you, you don't need to read a user manual to start playing around with those Lego bricks and make mm -hmm. things up. It's intuitive. We wanted to make Sandbox intuitive that way, and that's why we started with uh, Voxels. Afterwards, uh, we launched the Game Maker. Uh, no code, so people started to play around and create interaction, uh, introduce those characters, fight, enemies, uh, platforms, doors, whatever. Mm -hmm quests, a lot of uh, storytelling as well, and so on. And progressively, it turned out into like improving, making new uh, possibilities and features to, to create diverse experience that also touch to like a lot with culture. Like uh, the fact that you don't just have games, but you also have like fashion brands, uh, Gucci, Lacoste, Charles and Keith, um, or you have uh, music artists that engage their fans uh, not just to listen to music or watch a video, but to interact with uh, uh, in new ways to express that fandom uh, and, and build games with their favorite star or celebrity or music group. Uh, 
there we had a game jam uh, with Sivaoki, with Avengers Sevenfold, for example. It's really exciting and it's really new in a way. Like I don't know any other place where the celebrity or the brand say, okay, let's co-create together games. I will right. reward you. I will feature you on my land. Mm -hmm. So in a way, we, we always encourage that creativity. And I think it will drive adoption progressively of web free technology because what you create, there is a strong emotional attachment. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to sell millions of things. Like if you sell it to your friends, or a few copies, you're already proud. And even if you just own it for yourself, you're also proud because you made it. You know, it's not just anyone else, it's you. Mm -hmm. So I feel like understanding Web3 technology and true digital ownership through uh, content creation and a creator economy is a very natural uh, flow and a concept that uh, resonates a lot with the creators. And afterwards, from the creators, there will be a successful one on a platform so our role is to nurture those um, successful those creators to become successful so that they can make a living on it and it create really see the whole ecosystem around sandbox absolutely um so earlier you did mention that uh, a lot of your brand has to do with gen z and the youth mm -hmm. i'm just wondering other than the fact that it's a very viable market is there any uh, other reason your company decided to focus on the youth i think like uh, all that gen z um, they are digital natives, they understand very well like the idea of like spending time, socializing, uh, connecting, playing, even uh, working in virtual worlds. They, uh, they are more naturally understanding also the concept of virtual asset or digital asset and there's no friction in their mind to like, if I buy something, a digital asset or a currency with real money, is it really real? Yes, no, it's, it's just part of what they use on day to day. Uh, so they, they understand the concept of virtual lands as a place that they can host uh, content uh, and, and build up. And they understand that the value of virtual land will eventually arise in the virtual world that they are building that drive uh, a lot of uh, users over time. Just like in the physical world, they've seen that for generations ahead of, of them. Uh, and so um, it's going to be much more easy for us to adopt the technology in that sense. Uh, the, sand, the audience of Sandbox is not kids at the mm -hmm. moment, like because we are on PC, we are on desktop, PC and Mac, because we touch uh, those uh, cultural aspects and brands and we aim for people who are already sometimes in the active uh, life. Like we see like the sweet spot is usually, uh, uh, well, 18 to 45 years old. Which is also interesting because they are users who is already uh, uh, financialized, who are able to spend, who are able to uh, invest and understand the idea of like uh, the whole creator economy and digital jobs behind. Mm -hmm. On the other side, we also found a lot of interest around um, schools, uh, academies, universities to teach uh, the sandbox. In their program, we've right. seen that in Hong Kong, we've seen that in uh, in Korea, in Thailand, in Turkey, for example, and they use Sandbox as like a, an entry point to while like discovering what Web3 is, what um, uh, financialization of digital asset means, mm -hmm. and what the metaverse can can, uh, can bring to them. And the, they learn those skills. Doesn't mean like they are going to work in the metaverse in the future, but they are creative skills. Uh, they discover like um, uh, what I call like play to learn, basically like mm -hmm. uh, you learn so much better into 3D environment when you uh, solicitate all your senses and you have uh, the special discovery as well. Yeah. Like the, you uh, to appropriate the concept, to, appropriate, to memorize different things. Uh, and they also can express their creativity in different ways as well. And I think it's a good Sandbox is a positive tool for like as an introduction then to decide like, oh, I like making games and maybe I want to make a career into it and uh, jump into more complex, uh, try simple and accessible thing before you jump into more complex uh, software or engines like Unity or Unreal uh, behind. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, a lot of opportunities ahead for us to explore still. Uh, I think like we're still in the early days of Sandbox. We'd love to see the adoption from either the education sector more right. and more who see positive value in using us 
our existing audiences and brand that leverage uh, what we have to offer. Definitely. And I think that's something that makes Sandbox stand out, the fact that it's intersectional. You can combine learning, you can combine gaming. Mm -hmm. It's like a gamification of everyday life. Well, I, I do think like life is already gamified. Like we, <laughs> we like to uh, uh, earn rewards when we complete actions right. or we have a certain achieve certain milestone, whether it's our job or it personally. Why do we keep sport doing sports like it's to for better health, to improve our skills or running speed or stamina and so on. Mm -hmm. And all those concepts are already proven that gamification is essential to drive retention uh, uh, and re-engagement. We've seen many virtual worlds that came up, but they didn't have uh, enough gamification to to bring users back and make them want to like keep exploring, keep like uh, completing all the quests until the end, and so on. In Sandbox, 95% of the users who enter an experience, when there is a reward, they 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 do finish the experience. Mm -hmm. So of course, you might think like, oh, they only do it for the reward. But I see the opposite. You say, I think it, it, it's really because they, we are building in a habit progressively, like we drive them to explore more and more. And that's why they spend 60 minutes a day on average on Sandbox. They explore two, three more experience a day as well. And it will build up over time uh, retention. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the last question, I always ask this to my guests. If you had to give your one best piece of advice to Gen Z or Gen Alpha, so my generation, what would it be? Well, uh, I like to think like, uh, be curious, explore, go out of like the, the predefined tracks. Like um, a lot of the opportunities out there are not the one you're going to learn at school or being taught only. So you can experience life in the physical world, you can experience new life in the virtual world, and maybe your talent will actually shine in the, the digital realm. That's great advice. And that's it for the interview. Sebastian Borgia, everyone, bring the future to us right now. Um, thank you to my viewers and obviously thank you to Sebastian for participating in this interview. And stay tuned for the next episode.